The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to our service this morning for Passion Sunday. We're fast approaching uh, Holy Week um, and uh, let's hope it's a good Holy Week. But let us begin by saying the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now say together the song of the angels. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you and we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us have our readings. First reading is from the book of Jeremiah, a new covenant. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And as he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, 
according to the order of Melchunadek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Malchunadek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We wish to see Jesus. Some Greeks had gone up to Jerusalem for the Passover. The ancient Greeks were known for their inquiring minds and for their fascination for philosophy and religion. And these particular Greeks were eager to meet Jesus. It's likely they'd heard people talking about how he'd raised Lazarus from the dead. They might have been puzzled by the crowd welcoming Jesus into the city with palm branches and shouting, blessed is the King of Israel. So they approached the disciple, Philip. But why him? Possibly they were drawn to him because he, like Andrew, had a Greek name. Philip, as depicted in John's gospel, is a fascinating character. The other gospel writers only mention him fleetingly, but John brings him to life. Along with Peter, Thomas, James and John, Philip comes across as a personality in his own right. He's one of the first to be called by Jesus. And immediately he finds Nathaniel and tells him to come and see. I wonder if we're as keen to share the good news of Jesus with our friends, as Philip was. Later, when on a mountainside with his disciples, Jesus sees a crowd coming towards him and asks Philip, why should we buy bread for these people to eat? Philip takes the question literally. 
Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite, he says. Philip's practical response indicates that despite his initial eagerness, he hasn't yet fully grasped who Jesus is. Along with everyone else, he must have been amazed when Jesus took five small loaves and two fish and shared them between 5,000 men with baskets full left over. I wonder if we are prepared for Jesus to do the unexpected. Here are these Greeks wanting to see Jesus. Of course, anyone in Jerusalem at the, at the, Jerusalem at the time could see Jesus by joining the crowds gathered around him. But these Greeks must have wanted to do more than simply see him from a distance. They wanted to get close to him, as do we. Maybe they got even more than they asked for. Assuming Philip and Andrew had brought them near enough, the Greeks would have heard Jesus' next words, which didn't make easy listening as he spoke of glorification and of death. It might appear that at this point, Philip is hesitant. When the Greeks approach him, he goes first to tell Andrew and together they go to Jesus. Might we too be hesitant when someone asks us about Jesus? The next time, John brings Philip into the story during the Last Supper. He perhaps speaks for all the disciples when he asks, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus has just comforted his dis disciples with the words so familiar to us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip and the other disciples have come. They have seen. They've spent a long time with Jesus, and yet they still fail to understand him. In his initial excitement, Philip told Nathaniel, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. In turn, Nathaniel exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And later, Peter proclaimed, you are the Messiah. Yet despite all these protestations, it seems they still have doubts. I wonder, do we sometimes have doubts too? And are we willing to bring them to Jesus? All through his life, Jesus confounded people's expectations. Matthew tells us, of the wise men who followed the star, expecting it to lead them to a king born in a palace. Instead, they found the child they were seeking in a humble dwelling. Luke tells the story of Mary and Joseph, expecting to find their 12-year-old son among their relatives and friends as they traveled home from the Passover feast. Instead, after three days searching, they found him in the temple courts listening to and questioning the teachers. All the Gospels tell of the religious leaders, the scribes and Pharisees, repeatedly questioning Jesus, trying to catch him out, refusing to believe that he could be the promised Messiah. I wonder what those Greeks who came to see Jesus were expecting. Probably not the very troubling words they heard. In common with the rest of the crowd, they must have been shocked. While they expected him to speak of conquest, Jesus spoke instead of sacrifice and death. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, he tells them, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Once again, he's referring to his own imminent death. To a community dependent on agriculture, this was a clear analogy. If a farmer keeps a grain of wheat on a shelf, it will remain exactly as it is. If he wants it to grow, he first has to plant it in the darkness of the ground. 
Only then can it thrive and be harvested. It's unlikely that we'll be called to die for the sake of the gospel. But are we ready to take the risk of sharing it? Then there was a voice. Was it thunder or an angel or God? People no longer expected God to speak directly as he had to Moses, Abraham and Samuel. But we know his voice was heard at critical moments in Jesus's life, at his baptism, the transfiguration, and now as he approached his agony and death. I wonder what the Greeks made of this. God still speaks to us in different ways. John's gospel shows Philip as an enabler, asking the questions that we might want to ask and bringing inquiries to Jesus. This week, as we approach the end of Lent and journey on towards Palm Sunday and Holy Week, perhaps we might take time to consider where we fit in to the ongoing story. How might we respond to anyone who approaches us saying, we wish to see Jesus. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you to profess the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray for the church. In this season of Lent on Passion Sunday, as we continue to reflect upon the journey you made in the last weeks of your earthly ministry, from isolation out in the wilderness, through the gathering crowds as you made your way faithfully towards Jerusalem and into those tumultuous events of Holy Week. Please help us to reflect upon our own faith journeys as individuals and as a church, and to be encouraged and inspired by the blessings we have received and the hope you have instilled. And please give us the wisdom to discern what it is that you would have us do to be able to serve you as you would wish and grant us the strength and opportunities to be able to live out our faith and share our faith in ways which honour you. Please help us to be more like you. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we pray for the world. We pray that this season of Lent might be a time when those in the world who are living in fear might be able to start living in hope when those who are vulnerable might find safety, when those who you would wish to hear of your Easter story may do so, and that they might go on to know your peace and joy and love and purpose for their lives. We pray for those in authority, for all the leaders who have the power in this world to make life on earth a little more like heaven for those citizens whose lives are affected by their decision-making. May our world leaders increasingly model their leadership styles and values on yours. And for all those in leadership who have to make difficult decisions at this time, we ask that you'll give them good judgment and the wisdom to know 
and to do what is best. And Lord Jesus, we pray that we might be more and more the people you would have us be in this world. And that each of us in our small ways, as we engage with the world around us, that we might be able to shine your light through us and that your light will shine bright and make a difference. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, we pray for our community. Crawley is one of the towns in the UK potentially worst affected by the growing economic impact post COVID. And for those who have lost jobs and income or who face that prospect and who may be struggling with debts, bills, food and mental health, we pray that you will help them and encourage them. We pray that you will help us to be good neighbours and to be there for those in our community who might need our help and our support. We pray for Rob Pudney and those involved in Christians Against Poverty. We thank you for the food bank donations collected by Sue Gilbert and delivered to the Easter team. We pray that no one in our town will go hungry or lack the basic necessities of life. We pray for all those involved in telephone befriending and those who just quietly check in on those who may be lonely or isolated or shielding. And may all those who need a listening ear find the right words of solace and hope. And may we learn to love and support our neighbours as you would have us do. And this week we pray especially for those who live in Patching Close, Peverell Road, Pin Over Close and Pippin Link, Metcalf Way, Mole Close and Mulberry Road. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, we pray for the sick. We pray for everyone affected by COVID. We pray for those who have the virus or are suffering, maybe the after effects of having been infected, please heal them. For those who live in fear of getting the virus, please keep them safe and ease their anxieties. And we thank you for the continuing rollout of the vaccination program and the encouraging signs of hope that are emerging for our society as more of the population are jabbed. And we pray that the right facts and information will cut through the complicated noise of politics and media opinions so that individuals who have doubts or fears about whether to get vaccinated can come to a point where they can be confident in their own decision making. We pray that the world may now be on a glide path to post pandemic safety and that this virus might now be quickly contained and eliminated across the world. And we just pray that all those who can will work together to achieve that aim. And we pray for all who suffer in mind, body or spirit in any way. For those with new afflictions, those with ongoing conditions and for all those we know who have asked for our prayers. We pray for the patients of Langley Green Hospital and William McKean, Roy Scarborough, Myra Tyson, Arthur and Doris Pattenden, Bertie, Graham, Angela, Bill, Colin, Sharon, Alison Tucknot, Margaret Fairweather, and Ron Binmore. Please bring them comfort, strength, and healing. Help them to know that they are loved. And if there's someone especially on your heart at the moment, please just take a moment to quietly offer their name to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray too, Lord, for those who have recently died, including David Barry and Verity Ann Graham. We ask that you will give us sensitivity and wisdom to know how to support and care for those who mourn. And we pray for those whose year's mind falls this week. Alec Ganey, Tom Sharman, Richard Ballinger, John McGrath, John Poulton, Maisie Lewis, Kenneth Gilbert, Peter Bertie, Mary Lockhart, Nora Mansell, and Ernest Walsh. We pray that those who need you most at this time may feel your touch and know in their heart that light and that peace which only you can bring. Mm. And we pray that those who have died may rise in glory with healing in their wings and be reconciled with you in life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Merciful Father. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you all. Heavenly Father, accept the prayers left this past week on the fishing net. We pray that you will meet these people at the point of their need. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. They will become for us the bread of life and cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to plead our cause. And therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name, and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of St. Margaret and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Just before the blessing, dismissal and coffee, um, notices for this week um, are all on the uh, new sheet. Um, may I draw your attention to the fact that next Sunday, Palm Sunday, the church is open. We will be having a service at 11 o'clock um, which is absolutely wonderful news and then there are um, services throughout the week um, for Holy Week. There will of course be, remain the restrictions in place that if you come you must um, put sign in, get, get your ticket, you must um, wear a mask um, and there will be minimal movement around and I'm afraid there can't be any congregating at the end so once you're finished we need you to get up and walk out talking to people as you walk past but there can be no stopping but I thought that was a, a small a small price to pay to actually be back back in church so I do hope that some of you will be able to come and join us next week but do remember to get your 
get signed in um, so that you have a place. Um, also to be aware that next Sunday the clocks go forward, they spring forward, so make sure you come at the right time, otherwise we might be done and finished by the time you get there. So please do remember that the clocks spring forward next, next Sunday. And then, just so that it's recorded for posterity, Chris and Jill, are you ready? 51 years ago today, you promised in the sight of God and your family and your friends that from that day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, that you would love and cherish each other, forsaking all others. And it is my pleasure, pleasure today to offer you a prayer and a blessing and wish you on behalf of us all here this morning, every good wish for the next 51 years. <laughs> <laughs> Heavenly Father, we praise you for the gift of marriage in which the love of husband and wife is brought together and reflects your plan for love for the world. We thank you today for Chris and Jill, for leading them to each other in friendship and love, commitment and trust, and for bringing them for this blessing of their marriage. As you pour out your love, may they grow together in your sight and each be to the other a companion in joy a comfort in sorrow and a strength in need. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and your family and remain with you always. Amen. In the time on the tradition, Let's give them a round of applause, but you'll only be able to see their hands flapping because everybody else is on mute. But you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> so now on to the blessing and the dismissal so that we can have some coffee. Christ, the son of God, perfecting you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. Be in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Excellent. I can't wait to say... Go in peace. <laughs>